Hey guys, it's Sister Brack. Um, today we'll be looking at a piece from the Reddit community. Um, I thought I should do some offline recordings until it's time to, um, you know, get into live streams on October 1st at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and uh, that's when your Harvest uh, Goddess challenges um submission challenge submissions will be due sorry i'm a bit out of practice i don't even know why i'm teaching every day but i still feel out of practice um and uh some some really quick announcements so the challenge is due in, in about mm, five days uh so if you wanted to join it's too late <laughs> but if you want to join uh, go to isterback.com and click on the Reddit icon to join our community. This is where we post everything. You got 14 day challenges, you got illustrations you want critiqued, you got studies you want critiqued, um, you want to join the challenges and, and, and submit your work as you finish them. So this is someone who submitted something for our current challenge. This is their work in progress um, and I managed to get it to download. Uh, they used Portrait Studio to help generate a mood board um, to help encapsulate the kind of aesthetic they're aiming for beautiful beautiful shape language that they used i really love this one um but i also love this dress and they're probably going to use that <laughs> for their submission um beautiful beautiful layout palette organization really really amazing um remember it is a limited palette and i love how they've prepared for that they've prepared the lights and darks of all the colors they will be using um really phenomenal work exemplary exemplary uh preparation work love seeing this kind of research in action so if you want to join the reddit get in on our halloween 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 <laughs> halloween challenge <laughs> which will be assigned uh, october 1st as well so that's when that will go up this announcement for that it will be pinned at the top of the reddit community our halloween challenge okay um, then there is uh, Patreon. So if you want to support me on Patreon, you like this community, like what it's offered you, you've learned something, you've been critiqued before, and you want to give back, you can always do so on Patreon. I don't have a, a channel rep. I don't really benefit from my channel financially because the videos are very long, so YouTube doesn't like to monetize my videos. Um, so I usually just, uh, uh, you know, I'm not, I usually deny every, you know, suggestion to make my videos shorter. A lot of you responded to my previous videos and uh, said, previous video, and said that maybe make videos shorter, maybe try to add short videos to the, um, to the usual schedule of long videos, and I really don't know how to do that. I don't know how to only provide bullet points without explanation. Um, so this is just how I do things. This is how I do it. I'll never shorten videos for the sake of revenue or something like that. I'll never shorten quality um, in my output and my education and what I produce uh, for the sake of lining my pockets. Um, I, I want to offer a complete educational experience, a lecture um, for every video that I offer, my thoughts, and I want to offer it live so that you guys can watch it live. It's not going to be a quick... Um, you know, a uh, bullet point five minute thing uh, about getting better and then leaving the rest up to your imagination. Um, I give it my all and if you want to support me on Patreon, please do so. Um, this channel definitely needs it. I definitely need it. And um, if you can send some support our way, anything, there's many tiers you can use and the highest tier comes with many rewards. It comes with assignments. It comes with critique. It comes with uh, private live streams. It comes with video time lapse uh, of my work, my personal work with my own commentary, live commentary. Um, uh, of course, I can't do the full process of the painting. Some paintings take eight hours. Uh, so I just, um, I, I, I cut them down to an hour, tw uh, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, uh, depending on the study. And then I give you the PSDs, the brushes I used. Uh, so if you're interested in joining me as a patron, please do. Um, this channel, channel definitely needs it nowadays. Um, and that's it for announcements. Portrait Studio actually will be on sale very soon uh, by the last two weeks of October or the first two weeks of November. Um, I'll start sending out the announcements, but please let your friends know if anyone's interested in Portrait Studio. Again, it'll also help support this channel and everything that we do here. Uh, so join us on Reddit. Don't forget to join on Reddit. It's really important that you um, uh, click on the little Reddit icon and join so that you can stay up to date. All right. So... Uh, what I'll be critiquing is this fella, and there's a lot going on in this painting than, more than meets the eye, and there's a reason why I would say this painting 
has a lot of work left to do. Um, I wouldn't call it a failed painting, but there's definitely something wrong with it that is making it difficult to appreciate the elements in the painting. <sighs> All right, so where do we start? We have a very, very feminine, timid, almost broken arm way of holding the lamp. He's got a very unmasculine way of holding the lamp. He's also holding it in, in a way where it's attracting a lot of attention away from the portrait. This is the shiniest part, and then just adjacent to that we have a lot of detail and sharp edges. And then we have all this empty space in the chest area where you could have used some simple well-placed core shadows to help the um, muscle musculature along, and that would have been just perfect. And then obviously we're working what's happening in the head. So I just for the sake of time, uh, recorded reposing this on Portrait Studio um, and sped up the process that we were not spending a, you know 20 minutes on posing a, a reference on Portrait Studio, but I posed it uh, so we could have a look at how we could fix this arm, fix what's happening in the head, and make him a little bit more uh, present, make, give him more of a masculine presence. He seems kind of scared, very timid, which does not match the, the way you've dressed him. All right. So I start off by matching the arm. I love the way he's holding the axe. The way he's hold, holding the axe is just fine. Um, and I'm using the male uh, figure here. Um, sorry that it's recorded and we're looking at it. I'm sorry if there's a quality loss. I hope there's not too much. Um, one of the problems about posing with Portrait Studio uh, for you guys is that you're not sure, you're not aware how much you can do with a figure. And the human body has so many facets of motion. It has so many faculties of emotion that it, you guys forget to use them all. There's the tilt in the hip. There's the leg in front of the other leg. There's the upward tilt of the of the heel as they press against the solid floor. There's the outward orbit, that openness of the thighs, whether or not you're opening your legs out as you stand, if the knees are pointing out or pointing in. There's the openness, exactly the same uh, axis, the red line here you see in the rotator of the arms at the joint of the shoulders. And then there's more rotation at the joint of the elbow and more rotation at the hand. Um, and what I want to do is just make it so that the other hand is further away from the body. So let me pause it. The other hand is further away from the body and uh, uh, holding the lamp out to give the lamp some space, just to just to you know dangle there, but without burning his leg or being too close to his leg. And the arm that's holding the axe, because it's holding something heavier, has tilted the shoulder down, as you've noticed, and dragged the arm down, which makes a lot of sense. It makes this, the 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 axe feel a lot heavier. Um, and then there's what you did with the head. Uh, he doesn't feel very masculine. And so I, I enlarged the upper body. I enlarged the torso by selecting this joint line. And I enlarged it using R control. And then I shrunk the head back to make the body look bigger. Um, but also what I did after that is tilt the head forward so the chin is pointing down. And I did that for, for just to establish that sense of dominance, that sense of, I mean, this guy doesn't, he was basically a Kratos with horns. He's not as someone weak. He's not someone timid. He's, a, he's he, he demands the space around him. And that's what you're showcasing, a warrior. Um, and not just that, a creature. Um, so he's got a lot of fear factor in there that you're not taking advantage of. So I recreated the lamp to be on this side a little bit. Um, and inside the arm, I've, I'm going to decrease the orbit of it. It's kind of behind the body at the moment just because it might have dangled or moved a little bit. And I've also added the volumetric lighting just to just to see what kind of diffusion we have in the shadows as the fog um, trans like moves over the, 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 the body. But I will change the volumetric light to the lamp eventually. Um, so when it comes to a character like this, having his hand or his arm in front of his body is a form of weakness. It's like he got struck there or maybe that area is weak. Then why would he be holding something with that broken arm? Um, I'm adding just a little bit of bloom here. Fair warning, all these controls will be changed soon in the upcoming update. Um, don't worry, you don't have to download the update or anything. It'll download automatically for anyone owning it. 
um, and uh, be aware that there is just going to be a lot more control, so it might take some time for you to get used to it. The current tutorial you're seeing right now is probably not the current version of Portrait Studio in, in the future. Um, so yeah, this is me adding the volumetric light to the, uh, which looks a lot more cool because technically it would be the lamp causing the light. We tend to ignore in illustrations the universal light. We only use it only on the character, but surrounding landscape, we, t we try to render it with secondary light nearby because it would make more sense in a nighttime scene to have the lamp more visible. But in painting, we cheat. We make the daytime, we, we use daytime or overcast values on nighttime scenes uh, because they just make it easier for us to see things. Obviously, no one can really take a good photo with zero light at nighttime. Same thing with a painting. Um, and that just makes it a little bit more atmospheric, adding the volumetric light to the secondary uh, light source that I used here. I did turn off the uh, direct, I, turned, I turned off camera light and I turned off directional light, which is the universal light. I only use point lights in this scene. I'm also now messing around with field of view and it's gonna change the way we see the character significantly. And I took two screenshots of it. Um, on Portrait Studio already. I tried to close the Portrait Studio in the video. Um, there's this one, and there's this one. This one has a, a field of view enabled, and this one has no field of view. In order to use field of view, you have to zoom back in once you've raised field of view all the way up, and what it does is it makes it feel like you've leveled only with this area. This area is higher than you, and this area is from here on is lower than you. So you're looking down at this little marker and you're looking up at this little marker, sort of. Um, so this would be, you're kind of like zooming in this way. The other no field of view, um, oh sorry, this is no field of view. Um, this is field of view, so these lines are there. Um, and when you have no field of view, everything seems to be pretty level with each other. So we've got a lot of level here, and then this is where we would see the top of the feet. We're not really seeing too much at the top of the feet. We're seeing them stack into the distance. Okay, um, so again, this is the area that we're level with. We're seeing, as you, as you can see, he looks like he's bowing his head more in this scene because we're looking directly at this. That's an arrow, but like tilted. So the arrow is like laying down along the horizon. And, that, and then this is the exact same thing. The arrow is moving into the horizon like this. And here we can see more of the top of the arrow as it moves into the horizon because again, that marker, we're seeing it looking down. So imagine two legs with flippers. We either see full shape of the triangle of the flipper and then this character, this field of view mascot. <laughs> um, and no field of view, we're seeing the head flatten, but with field of view, we're seeing the triangular shape. Okay, I hope that's explained it um, a bit better. Um, field of view, and one more way of explaining it would be, this would be the center point, and this would be the two points at when field of view is enabled, and when field of view is disabled, we see the circles beside each other instead. Um, and this is just because the midriff of whatever we're looking at, whatever area is beside this uh, camera or in front of this, of this camera is now level with the, is, is the line that the camera is basing it off. We're pushing things into the distance once again. So we're seeing the top of this shape. If we were to have a sticker on the top, so it would be a square sticker. It would be compressed with no field of view and it would kind of be really easy to see with field of view. And this is extreme field of view. So we have two ends of the, of the spectrum, two opposite ends of the spectrum. So that's one way you could have posed this with some field of view, um, which would have been really, really cool. Instead of no field of view, which is kind of what you had, <clears throat> and you can see how tiny his feet are in comparison. Um, and then there's the pose. So I'm just going to apply these changes here, but you did need to do a little bit more research on your environment, uh, the staging as well, the lighting. It's not just about having intricate little details to carry the scene, though the details are beautiful and very, very well done. Um, I, I, I definitely recommend spending more time on the bigger aspect, the aspects that really carry the characterization forward, which is better gesture. Um, and more research into exactly what you're doing with the gesture. So it's hard for me to capture this lamp, actually. 
<clears throat> it's gonna be hard. Um, so I'm gonna just try to do what I can to. Watching this up on the belt here. Just using soft brush and lasso tool and faith. Just a little bit of faith. <laughs> and then I'm going to um, paste that there. Hopefully that was a good lasso. Yep. Alright, so I'll just leave this fella here on the side and um, clean up the rest with a blocking brush. Okay, and he's got his little keychain there. A couple more details. So we were just, I'm just going to be dealing with this painting all day, so I'm, I just want to push this as far as I can. There's no other lineup in the queue. <clears throat> okay. So the arm, I'm just going to grab this arm just so that we can see. Flip horizontal. So that arm is nice and close to the body, but it's not really tilted in a way that makes the arm feel heavy. So I'm going to paste that and just let it sit a little bit more heavier, a little bit more heavy. And clean that up. So that the arm feels low and then I'm going to go into liquefy and drag that shoulder down. One thing that you did that kind of threw off your painting is that you hid this shoulder under a lot of fur, which is, I mean, sometimes you just have to hide things under costumes, that's just what's required, but I would let the line of the fur at least read as a higher line so that I can reveal more of the space here and establish that really, really cool tilt. To make him look like he's bigger and more colossal, we actually have to shrink his head to make him look like a big guy. Because the bigger you are, the bigger your body gets, but your head doesn't, you can't really bulk up your head at the gym. Um, so you, you're you just uh, enlarging a relic. That's how you grow. That's why we use uh, large heads on younger bodies, because they. that's how we establish age. He kind of looks like he's wearing dress shoes. I, I would definitely rethink the shoes, maybe make them fur uh, of some kind. Um, he kind of looks like he's wearing like uh, suit shoes or yeah, some dress shoe. Um, and then there's the fact that his face is not, so I did two different experiments when I was working with Porsche Studio. I either tilted his head up so that he's looking down, which also looks pretty badass. Um, and I tilted his head down, um, so meaning he's looking up. So you have both of those options. Because I can't repaint the horns, I'm going to go with this option. But either head very low as a predatorial kind of threatening expression, or head very high uh, like a commanding authority, both work. Head level, tilted slightly, uninterested, with an arm close to the body, just makes him look weak. All right, so before, just take a look at the changes. Look how big his head was, kind of looked like a bobble head. And after. I oh, see that weight in the arm, too. Let me just uh, show you the weight in the arm before, after. Okay, um, your lighting is also just a bit weak, but before I get into that, I'm going to... Um, adjust the arm and the arm needs to swing out a little bit because it's giving some 
birth for the uh, lamp, which is important for him to carry. Maybe the lamp is part of this journey that he's on. He needs the lamp in order to see a ghoul or something like that. And I'm going to clean up this little area. And watch what happens when I swing this arm back out, the upper arm back out. It's just going to complete the piece. All right, he looks very demanding, commanding, and very strong. A man who stands wider is a man with confidence, or character, any character really. There's a wider stance. More distance between his arms and his torso means that there's more confidence. And then when we do the opposite, when the arms are really close in, all tucked in, more nervousness. And that's what we're reading as it's kind of like a you know understanding uh, interpretive dance as well. That's how we're kind of just our characters, our performers on a stage. Okay. So I'm just going to try to seam this in as much as possible. And you can see how he it looks like he's mid-stride, kind of like adjusting from one leg to another. I'm going to bring in that the rest of this uh, piece, and I'm going to color correct because you had a lot of blue there because of the lamp. And I think it's time to merge down. All right. One thing I'm going to do is darken the whole scene once I color correct um, and just reestablish some of these uh, movements of value across the canvas. Um, we need to know what's responding to the primary, what's responding to the secondary, and so on. So let's start off with the primary uh, light source, which is going to be affecting the head the most. And after that, I'm going to darken the whole scene. So I'm going to throw some of that light on his forehead on top of the horns. Now I'll erase wherever there is no light. That'll create a more direct spotlight sitting on top of his head. And the effect that is going to create is two zones of light sources. And when we have that, when we dim a primary and introduce a secondary ambient, we create atmosphere. And this painting, apart from him, is all about the atmosphere. This is high fantasy kind of, you know, uh, uh, creature, um, war, uh, magic. It's all about fantasy when it comes to those concepts. We also need to respond to the light source by casting a cast shadow off of this formation and this formation probably has a bud where it protrudes a level of skin before it starts to become the horn and I would definitely add those in. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure this is the right kind of edge, I'm making sure it's as clean as possible. So this primary needs to be responded to in more than one way. It needs to be also in shadows. It's not just about the highlights. So I'm going to get a new layer on Darken. And I'm going to grab one of these values here. And I'm just going to start sculpting around the head in response to the primary. And when we do this, we are responding to the light source, carrying that shadow down. Kind of looks like my sister's husband. <laughs> okay, um, and erasing at the nose because the nose is protruding. It's actually pretty large, and so it's combining with the forehead. Right, and the cheekbones are catching a lot of the light. And I'm just casting that shadow down. <clears throat> to help me along, I'm just going to advance the contrast with Burn Tool. Um, but be careful with that. Like I always say, I've never used this tool without reminding you guys to be the hell careful <laughs> with this because it's, you saw what it just did, kind of did too much work, and I just keep 
cutting away at the strength constantly. Still responding to the light source, so items feel like they're casting shadows. But I also want to establish a color wash because you can't just have gray, it's dark, and then you have moments of blue. There's going to be a consistent color wash everywhere, and I'm going to apply that anywhere I can fit it in with color layer. And it's mostly just around these shadows that I want to center it. Dimming the eyes so that we can barely see the light in them, but we still see a little light glimmer is actually really effective. I'm going to bring in more blue wash. It's this exact color of the lamp towards the lower half of the canvas, but there should still be a, enough of it everywhere else in the piece. And then there's the issue of the body, which is, we'll look back to our references, which it really does respond to the light source. I mean, he is sticking his chest out. The light is a little bit different in this case, but we need to make sure we have these core shadows, this core shadow moving down this way. It's a very different body type, but it will work the same way. So this core shadow is non-existent, and I'm just talking about this big patch of shadow right here. There, what I drew earlier. He's got much larger muscles. There's the shadow of the collarbone. There's that space in between the collarbones. There's the shadow of the biceps. But you've kind of drawn a little bit off. And then there's the shadow of the upper arm on the lower arm or the forearm. And then we have darken. And I'm just going to lay these in just like that. Just makes them look more, more ripped, I guess. Okay. Um, I do want to add these in on a separate layer, but it's going to make things a little too soft, but because I don't have time to blend accordingly. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, until it just fits right in on darken. Right, and then I'll just, with my brush, with my eraser brush, I Photoshop listens, <coughs> just edge out some of these areas, just so I don't have that clean an edge everywhere. Cast shadows need a sharper edge. Okay, and then there's me darkening the entire scene, just all together, dragging the scene down, um, and then selecting, going backward, and then erasing only where there really is need for it. So the light on the head, a little bit on the horns, a little bit on the top of the chest, and that would be that, because look at how much atmosphere we've established. And we've done that so that this little reflector that you had here now needs to be removed. We've done that so that when we bring in that lamp to help establish this atmosphere that we talked about, we need a dark scene for the volume to come through. And we need a dark scene for the color to come through as well. So that's how we establish this atmosphere. And then because this light that we've experimented with would cast its light everywhere, we need to continue this atmosphere created by this ambient eerie blue light and apply it to nearby objects. And it's the fact that we dim the scene that makes this look appropriate. Okay, and you really can dim this scene even more, 
you'll just end up getting more and more of that environment. Um, And then I would just go backward and erase away only what I really need, which is just around the head. Just really erasing away it right at the top of the head, into the nose, top of the shoulder. Actually, big mistake, the shadow of the neck would be much larger. That's why it kind of looked off, yep. So in the Portrait Studio version, I should have made the light directly on top of him. Careful not to use soft brush too much, because um, he's, a, he's a hard guy, he's a rough guy, so you want to represent that. Top of his ear might get some light too. nose. Sorry about that weird noise you guys are might be hearing. I, I don't know what that is. My neighbor likes to disco dance with his subwoofer at 5 p.m. I need to move out of this place. <laughs> okay, and on the very top, tippy top of his bald little head, we're gonna get some more light. See how much atmosphere we've established? And that's how you... You have ever wondered what makes atmosphere is just a dark scene. That's pretty much what everyone's saying. To create atmosphere in your living room, you turn off the lights and you turn on a bunch of candles. It's not magic. It's, it's just light show. So you can't have tons and tons of exposure in a scene and then wonder where all the atmosphere went. Well, it went when you turned on the light and everything started to look like a lab or a hospital room. There's no atmosphere in a hospital, <laughs> that's for sure. Unless the atmosphere is death. So, um, I hate hospitals, if you can tell. Just trying to figure out the structure of his traps here. I think his jawline would get a bit more light, but not entirely sure. Just try it. Looks good. Keep it. All right. Getting dodge tool here for some shine and shimmer. Giving the dude some shimmer. Some shiny movements of light on his, uh, so I'm not sure if I want to make them travel in this direction or travel in this direction, but as you've noticed, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you make the shine happen. As long as there was a shine belt, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, there is an actual answer, there's the right answer, but who cares what it is because it looks right no matter which one we choose. It's just that we feel there should be some kind of shine there and we added it and that's as much as we needed to do. And I'm just shaping out the horns a little bit more, casting some early shadows, really low res here. So if you have some illustrations you want to try, just remember masterpieces should be done um, every so often but not done religiously because you need to go back and do your studies. Uh, there is a way to study through masterpieces and that's just identifying what you have left to learn in your, in your, in your journey. I'm treating every pocket of fat, every section, even the mouth as its own little uh, form study. 
and I do this because I have an inward instinct that is aware of when a form study is nearby, um, like a little signal. There's the innermost part that we can't really see very well of the horn. It's catching some light. And then I would say, as the muscles grow higher, they catch more light towards the top. So, just at the very tops and then the very top of this belt right here. Okay, so if you're not aware what light to use when, that's a sign that obviously you need to do some form studies, but also references. And for anyone interested in Portrait Studio, it will be on sale towards the end of October. Don't forget, mark the calendar. It'll be 50% off, almost 55 actually percent off. And there will be a massive update coming up as well that will allow you to create massive shapes together. Um, and, and I mean, sorry, bring in multiple small shapes to create one massive shape and be able to manipulate it as one shape, which is amazing. Because that means then you can create anything with Portrait Studio. It's not you're just going to be depending on the um, the existing uh, panel of resources we have in there. All right. Okay. So that lamp is there, and now we want to project like you did earlier, the light of that lamp onto the floor below. We're going to do that with color first. And we're just going to throw some color on the ground. There's some clouds in the way, but or fog. And we're gonna grab that value and we're just gonna throw it there. And that's it. And <laughs> and then we're gonna just get some of that fog and throw it in just to distort. And then zooming out all the way, I'll be able to tell how much contrast I really want in that reflection. Sometimes reflections, um, as you as you did here, have long shapes to them. They're actual like mirror reflections, <clears throat> which means we wouldn't see this light. But because of the angle we're in on the camera, we might see it. Again, there's no wrong answer as long as you had it there. And then his feet, um, his legs are just feeling, a, a, his feet are feeling a bit small. So I'm going to go into liquefy and just bloop, enlarge them, just really give them some size. might have to re-erase that area there. It's mostly the foot area. He looks like a big old dude now. He looks like he's very commanding, very present in the painting. Very heroic as well. Um, and I'm just going to select, go backward, and just clean up wherever liquify. Took a dump. <clears throat> kind of don't really know what to do with this foot at the moment because I got tiny little tippy toe shoes. And you weren't using any um, field of view, so you really couldn't make his feet smaller because remember the paddle mascot, paddle foot mascot? I'm using my smudge brush here to help render the fur. You really do need a smudge brush when it comes to fur. There's like the excruciating way to render fur and then there's the right way to render fur which is with a smudge brush and make sure that smudge brush is on scatter. That's also at my, in my store at istabrak.com if you're interested. Okay, and then these little bumps in his um, wardrobe, the, 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 what are they called? Fabric folds. Get a little bit of that secondary light atmosphere there. So look at how much atmosphere you have. And then sometimes <coughs> the little fog that's floating everywhere around will catch the light too. And that's another wonderful way to create atmosphere. And before I do that, actually, I'm going to darken the lower half of the painting. Can't 
so dark and just so that we're picking up the right amount of darkness in the environment and then I will select go back and erase away wherever we have look at how much suddenly that lamp is really popping now and again it's all about atmosphere is all about making a scene dark enough for the atmosphere to even exist in it and it's just the outer edges of that fog that are getting the light I don't want that arm to be too lit up because it's a very indirect when it comes to the forearm and then you've got this axe which seems to have an outline on it I would just lighten because it looks like you've outlined the axe and all you really got to do is just get rid of one half of that value and then replace it with whatever shine you want or just make it all one value to kind of flatten the axe a little bit felt like it was flat I made a cardboard or something <clears throat> a little bit more contrast there uh, protect tones and that's not easy and uh, just for more atmosphere behind him you can have uh, more of this like snow we're just establishing that snow in the distance I if you had a new if you had access to layers which I do not have this would be a lot easier and then smudge tool another amazing tool for smudge tool is snow you cannot pull off snow or any other kind of deeply thickly built um, body of texture without snow I flip the canvas maybe there's too much occupation on one side of the painting than the other the perspective on the on the head feels a little bit off because the nose isn't high enough or his nose isn't in perspective I'm gonna enlarge his nose and no danger to his personality trust me he's, he's gonna look a lot tougher with a big nose and I'm just gonna tilt it over shrink it back down because the distortion Changed it. And I'm gonna get the old nostril back. Sh shouldn't be visible all that much. So I just moved it over a little bit, and that should help. Oh, and then there's the uh, cheekbone, which feels a little bit out of place, which is true. The flip never lies. And there's combining these sides together. The fact that the far side isn't really in any shadow. And I'm just going to uh, finish up with that chest area with some more contrast. mid-tones on Dodge and try to get the top, very top of his chest just being pressed upon by the belt okay so let's have a look at the before and after. A little bit more demanding. I'm going to crop it because it looks a little too tight on one side, as you can see. Crop, 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 where are you? Okay. But really, there's no point in cropping now. Yeah, there's no point in cropping now because the before and after will, be, will, will not be cropped all the way, so I'll crop later before after big changes all about atmosphere 
before. It's too visible. Exposure was really high, as I mentioned, and it it, it was just wasn't believable. He wasn't tough looking. Um, his arm was just on the side. He looks like he's distracted by something on the floor. And then after, a lot more presence, a lot more scary, a lot more mystery. Cast shadows are the kings of, of the stage, and you want to use them as much as possible. And a good start to this was using the right reference. So this is the reference I liked because it gave us a bit more presence and, and backward distance. We were occupying more space behind him. And just look at how much command he has, how heavy the axe will feel. <clears throat> Before, after. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to be saying that a lot more nowadays because I really want to hit 100k. Um, and if you like what you saw today and you want to support me, go to istabrak.com and click on the little Patreon icon here to join. To join on Reddit and submit your work for critique, go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon. Um, it's going to be a very interesting uh, challenge for Halloween. Um, if you guys want to join before then, I will assign it on the 1st of October. That's when the Halloween challenge will go up. Um, it'll be very similar to this. High atmosphere. Um, it was going to be one common theme, though. It's going to be a character design that I assign you guys with a very uh, not-so-open theme as before where you get to decide whatever you religion you want for the, for the goddess of the harvest or whatever aesthetic. It's going to be a very particular aesthetic. It's going to be a very repeated theme and you just see how well you can paint it. Um, so it's going to be a written uh, concept, and it's like a redesign of an existing character. I've already done the redesigning. You're just recreating it as an illustration. It's going to be minimal environment, just like we see here in front of us. No crazy backgrounds. You can have it as a light environment. You can have it as a dark environment. Light, light environment, or a dark, dark, or dark light environment. Uh, your choice if it's a day or night, but it's going to need some uh, atmosphere in it, so that means there's always going to be a level of dimness, even to the daytime, maybe overcast and stuff like that. Thank you guys for watching. Portrait Studio, which I used today, will be on sale towards the end of October or the 1st of November um, and uh, onward, so end of October by two weeks or a week, 1st of November by a week or two weeks, um, and the, the sale will be at almost 55% off and it will last two weeks and then we will have a Cyber Monday sale and then a holiday sale all at 50% off or more um, and definitely goes straight into what we do today and it goes straight into uh, the community so if you guys want to support by buying it now at full price that's also up to you uh, all my brushes are also available on my store at istabrak.com thank you guys for watching today I'm so happy to be back I feel stronger I feel like a titan I feel like I feel like nothing can take me down and I'm scared of saying that because the universe might send me another hardball but I'm gonna get that one too and I'm gonna succeed and I'm gonna be okay um, and it's been really rough, uh, but I've definitely, uh, I'm on the winning side. I'm on the, I'm on, I'm on the mend and way after the mend. I'm, I'm a Hercules right now. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys, um, maybe on another after hours, um, maybe on another offline recording, but definitely on the 1st of October at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Come by and, uh, and I'll see you guys then. Bye.